So today we had to talk about some of the emerging trends when it comes to the agri-value chain. Um, and we've got a fantastic panel here, so we're going to keep it quite fun, light-hearted, I hope, um, and go through a number of different questions. So, Nico, over to you first. I mean, Standard Bank has been in agriculture for a long time, um, and I guess with some of these new trends, some of these new models that are emerging, why is it so important for us to be involved in agriculture, and why this type of model? Uh, indeed, we've been in agriculture for 156 years, so, so we've been around with agriculture specifically. But I think, uh, to get back to your question, um, everybody sees the numbers uh, when you open any paper or any magazine or something, you would see people talking about population going to uh, numbers which scares everybody, half of us can't even count all day, uh, which pulls uh, the production of food, which is a, a demand puller, so to speak. And we fortunately, we sit in the African continent, which got about 60% of arable land still available for, for agriculture, which, by the way, is the fastest growing segment on the continent. Um, and I think for the continent as a whole, we, we, we contribute about 18% of, of the continent's GDP. South African context looked a bit different. Uh, different. It's about 2%, more or less, 2.5%. But if you add the, uh, the value adding in the South African world uh, to, uh, to that number, then agriculture contributes to about 10, 11% in the South African context. So there's, there's a huge focus on agriculture and, uh, and, it, and it is the place to be to, to make sure that, that we, we feed a growing nation. That's the one part. And then secondly, um, we're a bank, uh, and technology in a bank uh, is sort of synonym. Uh, so what happens with technology and other spheres of the, of, of the economy uh, also is of great interest to us. And there's been huge uh, strides for in, in, in technology uh, in, in the agricultural space. And I guess marrying these uh, type of technologies uh, uh, together with what's happening in uh, uh, the likes of, of the platform world that specifically Hello Choices is operating in, uh, makes natural sense for, for a bank. And then lastly, um, we've got the One Farm Share also linked to, to uh, uh, what we do here. And, and that, that in specific you know, looks at avoiding or eliminating or reducing whatever the right terminology would be um, the excess production that takes place, or the wastage that takes place, and how we can deal with that, as well as uh, on the on the other side, how do we create new marketplaces or access to markets for new farmers that find it difficult uh, to move into agriculture? So I think those are the things specifically that that uh, uh, tickled our interest. Fantastic, thank you, Grant. You've been at the forefront of really thinking about a new model. It's been going for four years. It's called Hello Choice. Tell us a little bit more about what it's all about and what have been your experiences. Thanks, Wendy. Um, I think one of the things that COVID has really done is that COVID has really uh, made it very clear to everyone that online uh, is absolutely a critical tool for everyone, everyone within business. And um, from a business-to-business -business perspective, I think uh, you know, looking at the global stats, plus also looking at what's actually happening locally, is that uh, the business-to-business -business wave is really following the business-to-consumer wave. And what is happening is that uh, Business to business marketplaces like Hello Choice um, are, in fact, really starting to come into their own. And the kind of question is when someone looks at marketplaces, there's sort of a couple of things you'd look at is ultimately the the actual issue is, is whether to go niche. So for instance, do you just do a just do nuts, for instance, as a specific sort of particular niche and you go very deep, or in fact do you or in fact, do you aggregate? We, we, in fact, you're dealing with a whole range of different products, you know, value, value kind of offerings, and and um, and kind of our view is that both of those models will work, uh, but in fact, you have to choose one. You actually can't choose. You can't be sort of half pregnant. You've, you've actually got to choose one or the other. The other thing that's also happening is that there's a massive move to what's called the business consumer. So what has happened is that uh, because of the whole online uh, 
B2C wave, the business consumer is becoming very, very discerning. I think years ago when there were marketplaces, procurement platforms, etc., what it looked like, whether it worked properly, etc., people kind of didn't really worry about it. But in fact, people are now very used to uh, the actual online experience. And, and what that's doing is that's raising the level for everyone. So basically everyone participating as a business-to-business -business marketplace, we come with consumer expectations. It's got to work, it's got to be slick, it's got to be efficient, and kind of those are some of the critical things. And then maybe Wendy, the sort of last comment is, um, uh, what you're also seeing is really the rise of what's called the super app. Um, I think that there is, in fact, such a plethora of internet information tools that people struggle to find things. And that ultimately, the kind of super app where a particular user group, community, value chain can access a range of services rather than having to search for hours and end through Google, etc. that ultimately. And kind of those are some of the mega trends which, in fact, Hello Choice is really tapping into to actually provide value to our farmers, retailers, wholesalers, packers who are using the HelloChoice platform. Fantastic. We'll hear more about that now. Sakila, we, we started working together, sure, beginning of 2020. We came up with some really good ideas. We spoke about the fact that there was a lot of excess produce that was available due to COVID. There were lots of hungry people. Tell us a little bit around your experiences with how One Farm Share was born, what it is, and what's been amazing for you? Okay, thank you. Um, so One Farm Share was, uh, came about uh, late 2020, um, but we officially launched it in 2021. Um, and it's a platform that connects um, the demand from the beneficiary organizations looking for food and uh, farmers that would like to, to donate or contribute to uh, food relief. Um, and some of the key points that uh, I've noticed uh, is that we've been able to reduce hunger and we've been able to channel uh, food that would have otherwise been thrown away or discarded to those that are in need. So uh, we've been able to um, grow uh, our contributor base. Um, so now we've close to about 363 um, contributors. And the fact that uh, we are making a difference uh, to, to the beneficiary organizations in need, we, we, that is just amazing for us. And whenever we do go out to meet these beneficiary organizations, it, it just makes it even more amazing to know how much difference we're making to those that are in need and helping to end hunger um, through our efforts as a team here. Fantastic, thank you. So Piwe, you are an emerging farmer. You live quite close to me, just outside of Johannesburg. And she's also a star of our videos, by the way, a famous star. Tell us a little bit around what One Farm Share has meant to you. So we've obviously launched it. We've been um, attracting a whole lot of different emerging farmers onto the platform. Tell us a little bit more about your experience. Thanks, Wendy. Um, according to One Farm Share around about March 2021, which was just at the beginning of heavy lockdown and being based down in the cradle of humankind where a lot of the farmers were growing stuff for the hospitality industry, they found themselves stuck with produce. They did not know what to do with it. And uh, One Farm Share became that platform that helped us to move the produce. We had excess potatoes. I'm sure some of you would remember there was a time when a kilo of potatoes dropped to almost like two rents and there was a lot of other um, highly perishable produce that farmers did not know what to do with them and we know that a lot of people like to give advice and say yeah but you can agro process but I mean how quickly can you actually buy equipment of, uh, of or, and, and agro process something that you were supposed to harvest on a Tuesday that's just not going to happen I mean first of all the machine is, might not even be coming from South Africa so that advice was just not really helpful so one farm share really came to the rescue of farmers we started supplying in Northwest and we subsequently got pulled into Gauteng. And what we've been able to do as uh, small-scale farmers is that we've been able to aggregate. The intention original, I think, of One Farm Share was not to aggregate, but it was to get the farmers to actually offload the excess produce they have or what was not retail suitable. But what we realized um, from African Marmalade was that we needed to aggregate because otherwise we we're going to supply for two weeks and that would be the end. But now we're able to say, so you guys have got pumpkin we can supply pumpkins for the next eight weeks. 
and we've advised, we've been able to start to say, you can actually grow for one farm share, but grow as a smallholder farmer, grow the less perishable stuff, but also grow the stuff that you don't need to put in a box, put in a bag because you don't have the money for packaging. So we've been able to assist smallholder farmers to grow their businesses by thinking long term and how this program can actually assist them to actually scale up. Fantastic, thank you. Graham, it's not just about the emerging farmer, but it's also been about your experiences as a large commercial potato farmer. Do you want to tell us more about it? Yeah, thanks, Wendy. Um, just in keeping with uh, evolving technologies and, and, and the fun side of, of these kind of discussions, um, going back not that long ago, as a kid, I grew up with a household that had, um, we, we shared a party line. I'm sure the older guys in the room will know what a party line is. So that's one telephone line that goes down the valley and the farmers are connected to it, but it could only make one call at a time. So uh, uh, quite a big, a, a number of households were connected by a party line. And, um, you know, the next big thing in our lives was when uh, we got an automatic exchange. We had our own telephone in the house. Um, and you can see, you know, in, in today, if you had one cell phone in a house, how much chaos it would be. So, and that's happened in, in my lifetime. So, you know, a technology or certainly communication technology has really, um, you know, it's, it's, it's moving so quickly and it, it's quite easy to get left behind. Um, I mean, even in your game, Wendy, with... Um, you know, online banking. You know, the days when last did anyone walk into a banking branch? You know, things things have changed rapidly over over a relatively short space of time. Um, when it comes to to Hello Choice, th that that change is it's been a natural part of of technology improvement and um, the digitising of information has been a major step for for us farmers and and our product. Uh, generally, farmers have the problem in that they are seasonal producers, so they not they don't easily build a brand in the market that they sustain over over time to all their customers year round. So they generally don't have anything to sell, and then they have what I call you know then the product comes uh, like a fire hose, and you've got to try and get that product uh, perishable product sold in at the best possible price, and it's it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, on your own as a farmer. Um, there's a lot of help in agriculture from service providers, from your seed to fertilizer, to the science behind agriculture. There's a tremendous amount of support out there. But when it comes to the marketing of a farmer's crop, the, it's, it, the, 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 there are market agents that are, are helpful, but there's not a great deal of support out there. And um, with, with Hello Choice, you, you, joining Hello Choice, gives a farmer a whole team of supporters. So you are able to, to take that fire hose of production coming out of your farm, find the buyers that, that value the product the most on that day, which is dynamic and it changes all the time, and ensure that you, at the end of the season, you look back at your, at your report, which Hello Choice does for free, and you can really see that uh, the, the best price you get is for the product that's sold on the day it's picked. Um, and the way in which to do that is to use all the channels available, the fresh produce markets, the digital markets, and, and anyone else you have, uh, a friend or, or cousin or, 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 or foe, to try and get the best possible price for, for every, every single uh, potato in my case, but it, it's the same for you with all your products. And I think that's, that's um, the technology change and Hello Choice's role in and farmers moving from the party line onto a platform is such a has been a really natural thing. Uh, initially, you know, a lot of us farmers are quite intimidated by, by, by you know, uh, uh, Facebook and, and the likes when when we can't speak to our kids because they won't get off the phone. But um, it really has, from a business point of view, it has changed our lives um, uh, to such an extent. Uh, prior to Hello Choice, before my potato season would start, I'd actually have uh, a, a kind of butterflies in my stomach. You'd have a nervous feeling because you know how the hell you're going to deal with all this, this, this big job that's ahead of you. And, and nowadays, quite honestly, I'm, 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 re um, I'm relieved and I'm looking forward to, to the season because I've got such a great team 
um, helping helping me now. Um, and and you can see they prove they prove the benefit in the numbers that come back to the farmer, which um, has also been a great help. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Grant, back to you, and then I'm going to keep on going with the panel. We've spoken a lot in the past about trust, and I think Graham also spoke to the concept of trust and how it's great as a farmer, both emerging and commercial, to have a whole lot of different channels through which to sell their produce. Can you talk to me a little bit around, first with Hello Choice and then also with One Farm, how we've been building that trust? Yeah. Yeah, trust is a critical thing because uh, especially when it's online, you know, it's not something you've seen, you know, et cetera, and, uh, you know, farmers buyers. And uh, trust comes really through knowing who you're dealing with firstly. So I think one of the things we actually make it absolutely clear is that um, um, Hello Choice and, and the One Farm Share is not just a website sitting in China or something, but there are people behind it who understand agriculture, understand retail, logistics, finance, all those elements. So I think, you know, sometimes people think a platform is you get a couple of tech guys in a room that develop something and you've got a platform, it takes a whole infrastructure. And I think one of the things we've been doing is actually building up that, uh, building up the actual infrastructure. The other thing is trust is built slowly. So, you know, lots of our, uh, lots of our buyers who come on, they'll test us and they'll see what happens or the farmer comes on. So sometimes we've got to go through two, three seasons <laughs> before the farmer really sees it. And once they see this, okay, we've actually been through it. You know, the payment process works. Uh, we actually know what's happening, the data coming out is accurate, reliable. So I think those are kind of key elements behind it. And then from a one farm, uh, one farm share perspective, um, trust is critical. So one of the things we did with one farm share is that all the food donations go into registered beneficiaries. And what we do there is uh, we've partnered at the moment with uh, Food for SA and with SA Harvest. And through that process, we know that every single donation that come in, comes in is going to a registered beneficiary organization, who they are, where they are, and also from a reporting perspective, from a reporting perspective, we know what they are, the size, early childhood development centers, old age homes, et cetera. So the kind of trust is critical because farmers often want to contribute, but they want it to be difficult to say, you know, how do I, how does it work? So we've created, so what we've done is created the actual platform. And secondly, they want to know whatever is donated is going to the actual cause. It's not being sold around the corner or anything of that sort. And, um, and, and, and obviously one of the elements around trust is partnering with Santa Bank around one form share, having a bank and um, <laughs> believe you me, they put us through lots of red tape and detail and, and auditing, et cetera. But I think those are absolutely critical to actually, to, to actually create the trust. So trust is critical, but it's actually earned over time. And just on that, I mean, maybe for the audience here, just to make sure everyone understands the different models, let's talk just very briefly, Hello Choice, what it is, and then how we've had that extension in terms of the model with um, One Farm Share. Okay, thanks, Wendy. Uh, from a Hello Choice perspective, um, there are kind of two elements to it. One is, which is actually supply driven. So farmers can, farmers and sellers, and it doesn't have to be farmers. We've also got quite a number of um, agri processors who are actually coming onto the, um, coming to the platform. They, they, what they do is list their product, and they can list that product to be sold in either an auction or a buy it now basis. And typically that is what we call when it is very, very much supply driven. Uh, what we've been doing the last year is adding actually demand to it. So where buyers come on and say, what am I looking for? And we call that and we call, we go then out with, with what we call a uh, bulletin called cabby supply. So now what we're driving is we're driving supply and demand from both ends because ultimately what we want to do is to create to create visibility in the market so everyone understands where the product is, the grade, the quality of it. Buyers know what they're looking for. Uh, we want to create we want to create efficiency, bring down costs, um, um, actually um, optimize the transport transport distribution process, uh, and then finally what we bring is. Inclusion, uh, bringing, uh, uh, bringing smaller farmers, buyers, retailers who, in fact, previously were in fact excluded from some of some of these value chains, getting them back into back into Hello Choice. So I think those are some of the things we've built from a Hello Choice perspective. And 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 uh, you know, one of the things that happens is that uh, every single buyer seller who registers, we actually contact them, qualify them. And what we get is get we actually get feedback from them. And currently, they're about uh, somewhere between 100, 180 to 180 to 200 new users per month coming on. And 
when, when, when in fact we're getting it, they're all looking for innovation services. And in fact, Nampo is quite similar. I mean, the people going around here, they're looking for new ideas, looking for answers. If it's a new harvester or whatever, they're looking for how technology can improve their business. And and uh, and in fact, that is exactly what Hello, Hello Choice is, is in fact the kind of platform that can help businesses grow. Farmers and also obviously retailers, wholesalers, packers. And so when we met with you, we realized that there was an amazing opportunity that was developing. You guys were doing really well in this space. Um, and I think the idea in terms of One Farm Share was um, born, which is really about um, you know, leveraging a lot of what you've done and the matching of the excess produce, as we said earlier, with the, with the food relief organizations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you just describe each of the yes. partners in that space? No, 100%. So I think one of the great things about One Farm Share, and, and, and some people call it, uh, they call it adjacent opportunities. So uh, using the marketplace technologies, we were really able to create a managed marketplace. So really what One Farm Share is, it's really a managed marketplace where in fact we actually manage the supply of uh, food donations. Uh, we actually manage the demand for excess food into our, um, um, into our different, um, different charities. The food or the, uh, the actual excess donation gets listed. Uh, what we create is visibility. So suddenly, um, Food Forward SA Harvest in all their national depots, they can see what's available, when it's available, okay? We can actually coordinate the logistics distribution of it, and 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 if it, quite a bit of that deals with also dealing with aggregation. So we can deal with aggregation, so we can bring down the actual transport, um, um, actual transport costs. And then one of the things that started happening, and it almost happened per chance, but it's really become a major focus, is we in fact also started getting a corporate CSI donations, saying what we'd like to do is to channel our CSI donations into hunger relief. But in fact, we want to make sure we're getting value for money. We want to, what we want to do is just to make that money stretch as far as possible, but we also like to grow the impact of it. So how, in fact, can we use that same, we can use, we can actually use the same funds to actually help develop our emerging farmer base. And then, then and in fact, that then grew where we now, in fact, are in fact procuring food from, from emerging farmers on a national basis. And through that, we're working with a number of development agencies agencies, government role players, um, and in fact what's become now critical is that the emerging uh, procurement that's coming through Hello Choice, um, uh, driving, driving one farm share, is in fact be helping become a path to commercialization, because it's helping the farmers with packaging, pricing, quality, and in fact what started to happen is some of the emerging farmers are now listing commercially on Hello Choice and in fact trading. So kind of what uh, so kind of um, what started really as a COVID relief project has really become a substantial development and impact platform one from Shem. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. I guess one of the things I wanted to ask Sakila about is the multiplier effect. So when you talk about it and you talk about donations, I don't think it's always clear that obviously Standard Bank, who's been orchestrating a lot of this, was using their CSI funding, and a lot of the time we're actually paying farmers, both commercial and also emerging, for their produce. So do you want to talk a little bit around how we accepted payment for some of it, but then we also got the multiplier effect? Okay, thank you. Um, so the multiplier effect actually comes by, for every one rand that we spend, we are able to get more value out of it. So. On commercial farmers, uh, for every one rand we spend, we, we get 67 cents currently more value through a special offer um, where it's a reduced price um, and they are also donating some of the produce on top of what we are buying. So we are getting more out of spending less. Um, since uh, we started, we've been able to uh, contribute about 8,300 tons since inception. Um, and that's created about 33 million meals to those in need. Um, and we are on track to actually this year in 2022 uh, contribute uh, 10,000 10, tons uh, at the end of the year. So it is a great opportunity to use the little money that uh, you have given us to be able to get more value <laughs> and get a greater impact, not just 
for the beneficiaries or the money that we use, but also for farmers, emerging farmers, making sure that they're getting the opportunity to contribute their food that would have otherwise gone to waste. Thank you. Sipiwe and Graham, and Sipiwe first. How can we attract more farmers on? It's an amazing opportunity, um, not only to test a new channel, it's also an amazing opportunity to um, formalize a lot of people that were uh, informal and um, keep people in, in work when perhaps there isn't the demand that should be. So from an emerging farmer perspective, how do we attract more? And from a commercial perspective, Graham, from your side afterwards, how do we attract more farmers? I mean, that's the, that's the golden juice that flows through the system. I think, first of all, by just making sure that the... The, the farmers, the current small-scale farmers that are on the system are continuing and doing very well and being coached and guided, and they are growing. Because there is no point in having farmers sitting at subsistence level forever. You know, we cannot be imagining. We've got to image and get to a stage where we can be seen and we are visible. We need to be able to increase our tonnage. We need to be able to uh, build the infrastructure that shows that we can actually participate on a on a bigger stage. Uh, personally, on my own, I, because I have been very happy with the program and really seeing growth for the business, and I've been able to bring other farmers. So the farmers that currently supply some of them in KZN, they came through me in actually telling them about the program and them coming to the farm and walking in and saying, um, guys, I don't even answer my phone on Monday. We're very busy. We're doing between 8 to 12 tons on a weekly basis, going to different depots. And then, and also explaining that there is just less pain doing business through this way. For instance, logistics is one of the biggest problems for most of the farmers. So you can get a trucker. The guy comes in because it's cheap. It gives you a cheaper rate. You want to move your produce. It is not in short. You get involved in an accident. You lose all that produce and it's gone. So now, because the logistics had been provided for, all you need to worry about is to make sure that you've got your stuff, it is bagged, and you're actually doing your delivery note and your invoicing accordingly. If there's a discrepancy, you quickly fix that. So it is really working. So we've been able to be the champions of bringing in more farmers, so people that are supplying, for instance, Feather and Houting, and um, I mean, the guys within, within, within Hello Choice keep on saying, I mean, do you now have got a farmer that is ready to be actually promoted? What we've done strategically as African it is to say, we're not going to set you up for failure and say start delivering immediately. If you've never packed one ton in your entire life, and if you've never packed a pallet, don't think that you could suddenly get a, an, an order for six tons and you think you can do it. Right now, as smallholder farmers, we do not have forklifts. So when I get an eight-ton eight, eight ton load that needs to go to one of the depots, I need to get the truck to arrive there at like six in the morning because we're palletizing on a truck. We've got a pilot check, we're moving the stuff. There's no way you're gonna do the pilots on the ground. How are you gonna get them up onto the truck? So you need to be able to help the farmers to make sure that they, they get the bigger volumes at the time when they are ready. Because remember, the beneficiary organizations must get the food every week. So we really need to be patient with the farmers and help them and not think that when they're making mistakes, they're being deceitful. Sometimes they really do not know or understand. And having the tools, things like scale. You know, if you're going to use your bathroom scale, it's not going to be the same when you just put in a simple digital scale to weigh that particular produce. So those are the realities that I had to deal with, and I really understand that these things are challenging. You learn, you have got to grow. So let us be patient with the smallholder farmers. Today, smallholder farmers or small-scale farmers are going to become tomorrow's commercial farmers for those that want to make that leap. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, that, thanks. That, that's a great... Uh, I don't know how you follow really, that. I don't know. I, I'm not. Uh, but it really shows that there's massive practical implications in, in every trade. And I, and I think that's that's been um, quite a big um, benefit with using uh, Hello Choice is that they really understand that it's not a... it's not The, the platform is digitizing information, but the actual product, there's, there's a real person at the end of that... Um, at the start of the supply chain, there might be rough roads, there's trucks that don't arrive on time, there, there's uh, delivery notes that may not be written out uh, properly. So, so there's a whole ecosystem of helpers at Hello Choice that, that turn the practical into, into workable. And, and, and that, uh, that's taken time for, for Grant and his team to, to build that knowledge on, on how to do that. So, yeah, hats off to to the the, the process, and it, it it does evolve, and it 
and it's going to get better. Uh, but I can't remember your question, actually. How do you... <laughs> How will we attract more farmers, not uh, only to yes. Hello Choice, yes. but also one farm okay. share? One of the, uh, just an economic factor that, that I, uh, I often think of um, on, the, on the one farm share side is that um, poor quality excess stock can often um, erode your price or uh, depress your price. I'm not too sure what the right word is. Um, it really has a negative in, uh, impact on, on the prices of all those products in that category. So, so if there's, um, for example, uh, potatoes uh, that, are, that are two weeks old uh, sitting in Durban market and they were sold this morning for, for three rand a pocket, that pricing information actually matters. Although it was a small amount um, and, and buyers use those bad prices that no one really wants that product necessarily in negotiating their price for the good quality. It's not even the same, you know, it shouldn't even be in the same uh, league. Um, so, so what I think One Farm Share can do and is doing, um, but I think can, can do better at it, is to take stock from, f to take it off the market, off the marketplace, whether physical or online, and, and get it out of the system so that we do not use these terrible prices um, to, to depress the whole market. So I think that's just from an economic point of view. Um, and then um, to, get, to get more, uh, it actually does benefit um, the, pla the, the individuals in the platform uh, by more people joining the platform. So, so you often use the example of, of network effects uh, from telephones. You know, if two people have a phone, there's only one possible connection that the two can make. They're going to call each other. And if you've got 100 people with a telephone, um, the possible connections are over four and a half thousand or something. So you get exponential value out of joining a platform w with more and more people taking part. So for me as a farmer, and f and for buyers, the more the more farmers that uh, uh, see other other buyers on there, the better for those farmers and the other way around for for the buyers. Um, and that that um, you know there's so many other benefits, but maybe not going into all of them. Um, Definitely, uh, my message to, to farmers is, is get onto the platform because so many of you farmers out there, we're not competing with each other. You know, they're growing maybe the same crop, but they have different season, they have a different number of, uh, they have different market that they supply, different buyers at different varieties. We're not really competing in the, in the sense uh, like, you know, petrol stations across the road from each other compete. Uh, we will benefit far more by more of us getting getting onto a, into a marketplace that has got all the buyers uh, competing for our product, and especially when the product is short, is when you should make money as as a farmer um, by making forcing buyers to compete for it in a transparent way. Uh, you know, financially, just gives you that extra price for for all of your product and not just some of it. Yeah. Thanks. Nico, I mean, we've got a lot of uh, traditional clients, commercial clients, and some emerging that we've been dealing with over the years. What's your ideas in terms of how we can attract them to these new models? I think uh, a lot has been said of, of what, what it can do. Um, I think the, the, the challenge is out there for us to spread the, the, the gospel. Because um, once... Uh, a bicycle go down, goes downhill, it picks up speed, and I think that is what, what is required. It needs scale. Um, and the more you can, you, can, you can display the benefits to your fellow farmers, the, the better. So I think that is, that is something that, that will allow this to happen. Um, I think marketing the traditional way will in any event change over time, and we've seen it in pockets happening. So... Uh, it depends where you are on this curve of development, uh, and sometimes you're ahead of the curve, and sometimes you're behind the curve. Sometimes you don't have a clue where you are on the curve. Um, but the fact is, um, if you if you're behind the curve, it's basically impossible to play catch up. So it's probably better to be ahead of the curve, and and let uh, that you, you know catch you up. And and then I, th I think this is one of those kind of of uh, uh, initiatives to to get the broader. Uh, base in, into that. So I think it's a matter of people getting used to it, uh, getting it out there. 
uh, and starting to use it and, and, and get the benefit out of it. So it, 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 I think it's as simple as that or as complicated as that. So kind of lead by example, yeah. show everyone yeah. the value, absolutely. I know we've got about 10 minutes left and I'm sure there's some questions out there. So I'm going to pause for a minute and open it up to the floor to see if there's any questions. Don't be shy. Anyone? Okay, nothing for now. I think let's do some closing remarks, um, starting with you, Nico. Just a last couple Thanks. of lines. I can see you ready to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, thanks, Wendy. Uh, uh, I think uh, farmers are exposed to, and I'm simplifying it immensely now, farmers are exposed to basically two big risks. It's production risk, and then it's market risk. And if you can if you can solve for for those two risks, there are other risks as well. But but let's not go there. Um, um, if you can solve specifically for the market risk in this instance, uh, then you've done a great deal because uh, farmers will also tell you the biggest challenges they have are two things: access to finance and access to proper markets. So if you can solve that, then uh, you've done a lot. And I think this is what it, it, the uh, uh, one farm share and Hello Choice uh, is, is is trying to to, to solve. Thanks. Grant, final comments from your side. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah, firstly, it's great to have had this uh, opportunity, and thanks everyone for yeah, listening. And I think to Nico's comment, we actually do want to we do want to uh, spread the word. Uh, from a one farm share perspective, um, um, I am really moved by the impact we are actually making. Um, I think there are numbers quoted that probably about half of all agricultural production is what is lost and wasted in some form. And when someone looks at the converse of that is that there are millions of South Africans who don't know where the next meal is coming from. So, so um, through One Farm Share, using marketplace, marketplace technologies to actually reduce food and to safely and securely get that to hungry South Africans is absolutely amazing. And the and and in fact the request from me is for farmers to really embrace it. Because often farmers do do actually want to participate, but they don't know how to. And that is all made possible through one farm share. Thank you. Um, I think the parting shot from my side would be to my fellow small scale farmers in the different provinces just to organize themselves as a group to be able to agree on what they're going to be growing and what they're going to be able to supply so that logistically it makes sense for a truck to be sent to fetch stuff. Um, so if you're in the free state to be able to say on this belt what is it that we are growing and the further you are from the depot rather grow less perishable stuff and closer you are to the depot that you actually grow the perishables and also to also be in a position to communicate with, with, with Hello Choice and the One Farm Share team and tell them what you have. The depots would obviously put out their wish list and say we would like to have the following, but that might not be what the farmers have. So if we've got pumpkin leaves, if we've got cowpea leaves and we've got amaranth, that is the green that is available that the, that the farmers have and that would be able to get into the system and also be able to promote the nutritional values and be proactive about the packaging because most of the time some of the stuff has not been listed. So for instance, if you want to go and put in pumpkin leaves, they don't know whether it's supposed to be in a box or in a bag. So as a farmer, it allows you to be innovative and actually tell them and say, this is how it's supposed to be packaged. And, um, and I think one thing that I would really ask, and that cut goes to both Standard Bank and Hello Choice, is to say, Every week, the farmers are sending out stuff that is packaged. And they don't need the boxes and the bags. What happens to that stuff? I think we need to create a system where the farmers get this packaging back. Because every week, stuff is going out. And honestly, people take out the stuff from the boxes and the bags. They consume the food. And this stuff might actually be ending in our landfills. But if we have a system that, as the beneficiary organization, come back every week to collect all the trucks of these um, of the food forward and SA harvest go out today, they come back with the packaging, which will then reuse. Because then that also immediately reduces the cost that we actually sell the food out to. But but also if I'm donating, you know, it means I'm donating the produce plus the packaging, and then I have the following week again, I've got to donate the packaging, and packaging is very expensive. Thank you. Yeah. Great point. Great, great idea. I see Grant was taking it down. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely noted. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, maybe as a last uh, passing uh, comment from, from my side is that um, as a free market capitalist um, producing in a country where, where there's a quite a number of our population that are not part of the free market capitalist system ha and have been left out. Um, I think over time that's a dangerous situation and if they can see that um, you know agriculture, the, the golden goose that, that lays that, that egg that feeds everybody um, provides for, for, the, for those of us or those members of our community that have been left out um, and, and they're getting a, a piece of the pie, so, so to say, I think is a, great, um, is a great benefit to all of us, but it also protects uh, the free market um, and shows that, that all of us can benefit from it. Sakila? Um, yeah, maybe in uh, closing, what I could say is that um, being in the trenches every day, seeing uh, the farmers, uh, the emerging farmers, the mothers that are working in the fields with children on their back trying to make a living and not knowing where exactly the produce is going to end up and having an opportunity like One Farm Share to be a soft off-taker for them is making a huge impact and a difference in their lives. Not just uh, in income-wise, but they are producing something that will end up at someone's table or plate that really do need it which are the beneficiary organizations. When I go out and actually visit the, the BOs of um, Food Forward and SA Harvest, and I see the kids that line up to collect these meals and how much they're looking forward to those meals, those warm meals, it, it, it blows my mind away at the difference and the impact that we are doing as a team. All our efforts, I get to see them firsthand and the impact that they're making. And I want us to continue the great work that we're doing. Absolutely. So just in summary, I hope what was clear today is that the new emerging markets are definitely around a digital marketplace. What Hello Choice did four years ago is to establish one of those digital marketplaces, and they're doing really well at it. What we loved about it as Standard Bank is that we were able to work with them to, to um, come up with a concept called One Farm Share, that's exactly what you've just described. It's a matching of excess produce with food relief organizations. I've seen those kids. Um, I've gone to the Gorgel kitchens. They come around and they pick up the spinach, the butternut. It's the most amazing thing to see. And we're able to orchestrate all of that. So I think what you're seeing in action here, and thank you to the whole panel, um, is a new emerging model and two great examples of how it actually works. Thank you to the whole panel.